you know, and if they wear out in a nuclear power plant, it's really bad. It's like the difference between a car accident and your engine wearing out and being in a plane and the engine running out. You know, there's a big difference between something wearing out and nuclear power is way too risky. Arnie, I know on, on your site you've got uh, a lot of really important clips, experiments that you've run, Fairwinds Associates, and our viewers can see that on, uh, on the screen here and be, be checking you. Um, but but uh, I'm, I heard that you have been asked to participate in, in the Japan Environmental Film Festival or that you guys are presenting a, a program there. And to me it sounded like you were presenting a, a message of hope. It's kind of like echoing what Dave was saying right, right here. What is that about, the film festival about? Well, on, uh, on Friday, that, that's the, the 1st of July, um, we, were, we were asked to go over and, and be the keynote speaker at the uh, uh, Tokyo Peace Film Festival. Uh, I, I couldn't do that. It didn't make sense to fly all that time for 15 minutes. Aren't, you, put, aren't you anxious to get to Japan? <laughs> I, I, actually, I will be going back at the end of August. It looks oh, like, wow. So, uh, but anyway, um, so we put together a video which will be up on our site on Friday as well. And you're right. There, there is a message of hope here. The, um, the, the Japanese can go back to nuclear power and... Um, there's a huge protest movement within Japan right now. They gathered seven million signatures to uh, to stop the firing up these nuclear plants. And just last Friday, there was 45,000 people surrounded the prime minister's house trying to prevent the startup of these nuclear plants. So they have an opportunity here. And it's not going to be easy. You can't claim that, you know, starting tomorrow, if you put your solar collector up, everything's going to go away. But but they can start a different process, uh, down a different path, you know, with, with solar or wind or alcohol-based fuels and a smart grid. And, and the difference between this century and last century is that we can move power on grids now that we couldn't do back in the 1960s or 1970s when all our nuclear plants were, were built. With computers, we can shift the load to where the powers need it. And you can distribute the generation all over um, a, a country. And I'm, I've been telling the Japanese now for a long time that there's a business opportunity here. If they figure it out for Japan, they can sell it to the rest of the world. The Germans get that message. The Germans are walking away from nuclear within 10 years. And the reason is they've figured out they can make more money selling windmills, selling solar, selling um, the smart grids, selling, you know, anything but nuclear so that if, if there's money to be made and i believe there is um, distributed generation of power is the 21st century way of making power and that was the message we tried to give uh, um, in the video that's going up on friday to the tokyo film festival wow that's that's really that's really powerful and it's interesting that the people of japan how can you have that that much of a population not have say in what's happening to them? I mean, it's just incredible. Well, uh, I mean, there are a lot of industrialized countries give way too much power to uh, economic interests to decide political policy, and that's that's a fundamental problem of you know of the degra degradation of democracy, and you get that when there are huge concentrations of money and corruption. I mean, look at the way the government runs in Nigeria. It wouldn't be so such a kleptocracy, you know, if it if it wasn't for oil there. You know, if there wasn't this concentrated wealth that a small number of people had an interest in. So, you know, the people who have an interest in oil or coal or nuclear are small but powerful. And the population has this annoying benefit and, and advantage, but it's not as powerful as money. They have the truth, you know. Like, nuclear power is dangerous. That's the truth. Solar power done properly is cheaper than nuclear. That's the truth. But to break through, for instance, subsidies, uh, you know, other kinds of opposition that's regulatory, uh, you know, refusing to upgrade, as Arnie said, to a smart grid that can take energy from many small sources, you know, those are things that have to be fought at the policy level. And corporations in conjunction with some governments have a lot of say in that versus the public.
Yeah, I know, I know you're not, um, you don't consider yourself a, an advocate, Arnie, that you're a, an expert witness and you're a nuclear engineer. And, and uh, I think this reflects what Dave's just saying is, is that uh, the truth is what we have. And it's really great that you're presenting the truth because you don't have to advocate. All you have to do is present the truth and let people kind of think this thing through. Because if you don't have the data, and very few people do, I, I'm so grateful that your site's there and you and Maggie are working really hard to get this information, like Dave working, uh, you know, you can go to um, the IIEA site, Dave's uh, website. Um, it's uh, alcoholcanbeagas.com. And uh, we have a lot of uh, discussion of alternative ways of making electricity, refrigeration, uh, cooking, of course, vehicle power. You know, all of these things can be made by, you know, solar-based fuels. And, you know, all of them are cheaper than fossil fuels or nuclear. What, what's your uh, takeaway watchword now for the next couple of weeks, Arnie? Do you think we should be concerned? Is, is San Onofre uh, done? Or are we going to see something else happening there? Well. I'm, I am concerned that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is going to allow San Onofre to start back up. Um, they have never shut a nuclear plant down permanently. Uh, but the, the real solution to, to San Onofre would be to keep it shut down for a couple of years and go in and replace those new steam generators with, with new steam generators. <laughs> uh, but, the, of course, the problem is that San Onofre committed that they weren't going to spend more than... Seven hundred million dollars replacing them. So who's going to give them the next seven hundred million? Uh, Wall Street doesn't want to touch the deal, and this gets back to the subsidy thing. We're dealing with a technology that, were it not for federal subsidies, wouldn't be subsidized by by you know a, a capitalist economy. So what we've done is we've socialized the uh, the risk. When these things break, we all pay for it, and and we've capitalized the gain when they run. It's the it's the corporations that make the money. It's um, it's a lose lose for um, for the people in Southern California. I'm afraid. Boy, you know, I I ask uh, Dan Hirsch when when he was on what um, who the good guys were in in power and who could the the public be communicating with and saying thank you to and. Uh, and Dan just threw his hands up and said, there's, there's nobody that NRC really touches everyone in power and puts the money in po political pockets and, and lobbyists. And uh, I don't know, but it's really nice to have the, the concurrence between two very knowledgeable people saying that we do have ways around this. We can boil water in a better way, I think. <laughs> well, let, yes. me, yeah, let me just say one thing. Um, your, your Senator Barbara Boxer has been... Um, uh, not an advocate of shutting the plant down, but an advocate of a thorough scientific process and holding the NRC's foot to the fire. Uh, so <laughs> if there's one person out there in California on San Onofre, uh, it would be uh, Senator Boxer's staff that's been instrumental in just making sure that the NRC does their job. You know, we have a quick call. We have a caller online. I'm going to see if we can get them on and, and just, we're ru running out of time, but caller, can you hear me? We're just, we're just getting the caller online, guys. And uh... Well, you know, while the caller's coming online, the biggest subsidy for nuclear power, of course, is the Price-Anderson Act passed many, many years ago, which limits yeah, the amount I'm of here. money you hear me? that... Uh, let's go to the caller. You have just a moment, please. Caller? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, you, you have a moment with us. Oh, okay. Um, wondering about... Uh, fish and salmon and contamination from radioactivity from Fukushima, um, um, what is the feeling? I know that there were tuna caught down around San Diego found to be uh, tainted, and I'm wondering what's going on. Should people stay away from fish caught in the ocean? I'll listen on the Internet. Thank we you. We have just a moment. Arnie, do you have a take on that? Uh, yeah, there were uh, scientists caught 15 tuna, and every tuna was uh, quite highly contaminated with cesium-134, 137. So that means every tuna they caught was contaminated, and that speaks. Those tuna were only five months after the accident, 
and they spawned near Japan. So they spawned in Japan, swam across the Pacific, wound up here, we caught them. And then it was about eight months before they published their data, unfortunately. Right. So we've got contaminated tuna, and I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. As citizens, we've got to demand that the government test this stuff. But right now they're on don't ask, don't tell. We, we don't ask the Japanese what's in the tuna, and they don't tell us. Dave, did you? Well, of course, uh, you know, the size of the uh, radioactive pollution from Fukushima dwarfs the pollution from the BP oil spill years ago you know, a year ago. So what we're talking about is it'll take time before the radioactive particles in water will, will move with the currents to our fishing grounds where salmon and stuff will be affected. But when it does come, uh, the whole thing about radioactive particles is they're water soluble. And so they love living things. And they, if, you know, you have smaller creatures eat the radio, uh, radioactive particles, bigger things eat them, Bigger things eat them. Now the salmon eats the bigger thing. And all of a sudden, you've concentrated by 10 times, because every level eats a lot of food. By the time it gets to you, the radiation content is huge. And tuna are enormous. So they're big bioaccumulators of metals and radiation. Mm -hmm. You've got to realize, though, it's not just the nuclear power plants. It's coal. The whole Pacific Ocean is blanketed every day with mercury and radiation from the burning, massive burning of coal in uh, China. So, you know, uh, radiation is in every bit of coal, you know, particles. And so we have multiple sources of bad fuels that we have to end. But the scary part of Fukushima is if that fuel pool burns in days, we will be experiencing exposure via the wind. And uh, it's the immediacy uh, and the severity of what we're talking about with nuclear power that is unmatched in terms of foul sources of power. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm happy to be a vegan sometimes, and this is one of those moments I think there's, there's maybe a benefit here for us, but what a crazy, crazy mess. And Arnie, I can't thank you enough. We're down to the wire here. I, I want people to uh, visit you on Fairwinds and Associates. Arnie and, and Maggie are doing fantastic work there, the scientists you're in league with. Dave Bloom, always great to have you on the program. And I'd, I'd love to see the, the panel with the two of you together. I think we've got to get you live and in front of the world. This is a very powerful message. So tell your friends, watch. Uh, they can see it online every Tuesday and Thursday, 6 and 10 p.m. We stream live on the Internet. We post on Vimeo. This is one of those shows. Last time Arnie was on, we had about 10,000 downloads of the program. So uh, we're really looking forward to getting you guys uh, on and, and the word out. Stay safe and, and uh, think green. Let's, let's think uh, alternative energies for a bit. <laughs>